everyone, Peter Hewitt, La Artistino here. I've been working through a backlog of requests and questions that have been addressed to me regarding colouring, and I decided that I would play with this one. This question that I've been asked is, how do I do a black background? Now we've all seen them, uh, if you look at colouring online and pictures that people have posted, where they've taken a page and they've coloured in all the black ground black and maybe put stars on it or something, but it, the effect is really good. It makes all the elements, the coloured elements in the picture really pop out. But how do you get that black background down? There's several different ways of doing it. You can colour it in with black pencil. Uh, you'd have to colour it in a lot and very darkly in several layers to get that lovely jet black matte effect. Uh, you can use a sharpie. Uh, not so good if you've got a double sided book where the sharpie is going to bleed through to the back and spoil the other picture. Uh, I've seen people use uh, pots of ink and paint it on and um, that's very good as well but it can be a bit messy using a paintbrush if you're not experienced with it. So I played around with it, the idea, and came up with something which I think will work for everyone. Now the book I'm using here is Millie Marotta's, I'll ignore that, Choo, turn it around, Millie Marotta's Tropical Wonderland. This isn't my good version of the book. This is a book that I picked up actually at the op shop for a couple of dollars. I've actually got a, a, my good version of Tropical Wonderland. This I use just to play around in and experiment. It's always good. See here, I've got a picture here that I'm just, it had some attempt at colouring it. And I've just uh, used this picture to test out how different uh, pencils are going to perform in the book. Um, here's one of my test pages. I've got all sorts of things down here while I'm experimenting with stuff. So we'll use this book to show you how I do this. Now, okay, we'll open up to this page, which is another test page. If anybody's wondering, that there is doing ink tense pencils activated with water, the same way as I do in the Magical City. I found with this book, uh, it does pretty well. Uh, except if you use an excessive amount of water it will bleed through slightly which is something I haven't had in the Magical City but if you're pretty good with the water control then you're not going to have a problem with bleed through. But back to the question at hand, how to do a black background? After experimenting with a lot of different ideas I found this way to be the most effective and what you'll need is a black pencil, this one is just a Faber-Castell Classic which is just one of the cheap Faber-Castell student range. Inexpensive, sorry, so they're not cheap, they're nice pencils, they're just a student range pencil. And the Faber-Castell pit pens, and I've got two here. I've got the uh, black fine one, which looks like that, nice fine tip. And I have the big brush, which is often sold in craft shops to stampers because you can colour the back of your stamp with it and then use it to stamp and it makes a nice ink. This is Indian ink by the way, this is not watercolour ink, it's nice and deep. So what you do with these, first off you take your black pencil and it doesn't have to be a Faber-Castell pencil, it's just this is a nice cheap pencil to use and you select an area to colour. I'm going to colour in this little piece here. So what I'm going to start off with is I pick up my pencil, my black black pencil, and I apply a layer of black. Now you'll note I'm not pressing at all, I'm just putting a, a greyish sort of uh, layer, just no real pressure. Just try to get it sort of even, it doesn't even have to be perfect. That sort of even, like this, is good enough. Now, as I said, it doesn't have to be a Faber-Castell pencil. I think you could probably do the same thing with a Crayola or any other type of cheaper black pencil. I suggest though that you choose a pencil and test this technique out on a scrap piece of paper first just to make sure the pencil is compatible with this technique. There. I've also seen people black out pages with black gel pens. I think that would take a very long time and probably use out 
use up quite a few gel pens. A lot of patience there, because gel pens, the point of a gel pen is pretty thin. But it looks good. There. Now I've got a little layer of grey there, and as you can see, it didn't press very hard. I just sort of got a, a nice sort of even layer. Now I'm going to take the thinner of the two pit pens and I'm just going to outline where I've done. Now the reason I'm doing this is I don't want the thicker nib of the brush pen to start going over my coloured artwork. So I'm just going to put a little layer down and it will go quite nicely straight over the top of your pencils. I've not had any problems or issues with the nibs blocking or getting picking up bits of pencil you know particles and blocking the um, ends of the the nibs the color continues to flow quite well throughout the whole process I'm just outlining everything to make sure that I don't have dirty great spills of black where I don't want it around all these finer details here. I have to take particular care in Millie Marotta's book because of course she uses quite fine lines. Now you'll see even though we haven't gone very far yet that we're getting a quite a nice dark black Right, that's all that outlined. Now I'll pick up the bigger Pit Artist pen and we will just fill in the rest of it. Now, Pit Artist pens are Indian ink, as I said, which means that they set permanently. They're, once they're dry, they're not water soluble, which is always fun. But you do have to give them a bit of time to dry first. Okay, that's done. Now, if I turn this page over, we will see Ta -da! there's no bleed through. There's the page there with the very dark black there, nice and br nice dense black. And no bleed through whatsoever so you don't have to worry about black going through to your other page and you get a lovely dense uh, layer of black there if you want to if it looks a bit patchy to you wait for it to dry and go over it again with the artist pit brush pen going perhaps in a different direction to make it extra extra black but this would be plenty black for me Next I became curious to see what would happen if I used colours other than black using this technique. So I took this Colour Me Calm book and had a little play. Down here I've got the black pit pen which I used without a pencil. It's a bit hard to see on camera but it's actually a bit patchy and you can still see the line art underneath. It's not a smooth surface. This one I did with the pencil underneath and it's nice and dense. Over here I tried the yellows. This little circle here I did just with a yellow dark chrome yellow pit pen marker and as you can see you've got those annoying little areas where the pens overlapped and made a darker lines throughout so it's not an even coverage. And anybody familiar with working with water markers will know that effect. It's so annoying. This one, I coated it first with a yellow Faber-Castell Classic pen, uh, pencil. This is a gold yellow colour. And then I went back over it with the dark chrome yellow pit pen. And I've got a much smoother result. It's not absolutely perfect. There's still a little bit of crossover in sections, particularly if I left it for a few seconds and then went back to that area and uh, so that the pen uh, ink had time to sort of set a little bit. But it's a huge improvement over this piece right here. 
and I decided to see what would happen if I tried it with Sharpies. Right here I have a Sharpie colour with Sharpie area just here which is just the Sharpies and here I've got an area which I've coloured with the Sharpies with a pencil underneath again with this gold yellow uh, classic colour pencil. If I turn the page over you'll see that the Sharpie by itself bled through incredibly with the, pen, with the paper as alcohol markers will do. But here where I've used the pencil it's prevented some of the Sharpie from bleeding through. It's so much lighter so the pencil has acted as a resist to protect the paper underneath. Now this is only very thin paper, it's about, you know, like photocopy paper, but all the same, that's pretty impressive. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little short tutorial on how to do black backgrounds, my recommendation, using Millie Marotta's Tropical Wonderland. As usual, please test these techniques yourself on a spare piece of paper or the back page of your book or a page you don't mind sacrificing to make sure they do work for you. And until next time, happy colouring! I hope you're enjoying any colouring adventures that you are currently on. And until next time, happy colouring!